Michael back on the line. We'll pin them to the page and we'll continue our conversation. Thank you for your patience. Um, so let's see if we can we can have them talk. Hello, Nkobeko and... Uh, oh, we're here. Can you oh, hear us? Good, 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 good. I'm so sorry for this, uh, but thank you for, for your patience. So okay. not to cut the conversation, can you just go ahead with where you, you okay. ended? Where we left off. Yes. Um, what are we talking about? You were on point number... We were talking three. about gifts and talents and yes. how God has bestowed the gift according to the measure that he sees fit. Um, and um, it's our responsibility as those who have been given the gifts to nurture and make sure that the gift grows in order for the master at the end of the day to say, well done, good, good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. Right. That is something that we all should aspire to, is to grow our gifts and our talents to the point that when we get back home um, to heaven, to our heavenly father, he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hmm. It is disobedience um, to not grow your gift and talent. If you're not growing your gifting or your gift or your talent, you are in disobedience because we are serving a God who multiplies. So when you are not multiplying what God has given you, you are in disobedience. So it's extremely important that um, a gift is what God gives you. Skill is what you give God back. <laughs> it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility Excellent. to get skill skill and get excellent in your skill gift is what god gives you and skill is what you give back to god and someone might say but i don't have an opportunity to go to school and and learn you know uh, probably have more responsibilities but we're living in a world of internet where information is available you mm. know you, you, you go to youtube and and you find people who break it down for you, demonstrate things for you, you know. Uh, you can use your data differently maybe and invest it more in making sure that you grow your gift. It is my responsibility to grow my gift. It's not something that I can pray about. Mm -mm. The stuff that we can pray about, that we have to pray about. But in terms of excellence and skill, it's something that we have to do and, 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 and make it a lifestyle to develop and to grow and to learn. We learn from other people. We learn from their, those who are doing better than us, those who've been around for a while. We learn from them, yeah. Yeah, and, and um, one of the quotes that really um, shook us in our um, musical careers and in, in us wanting to, to push our gifts and our talents further was um, the saying that says that only a fool wouldn't invest in himself. Mm. So it is really important that you invest in yourself. No one's going to do it for you. It's up to you to do, to make that investment yourself mm. in the gift and the talent that God has given you in order for you to grow and multiply in your gifting. Yes. Right. right. The next question was, um, how can we develop strong vocals in our ministrations? <laughs> How do we develop strong vocals in our ministrations? I mean, yes. Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, the, the thing with, um, with singing, I think um, Tia said it earlier that um, you cannot, it, it really goes, it all boils down to your private life. If you don't practice at home, it's not going to be automatic you when you're in front right of the con congregation. It, there's nothing that happens uh, by chance when it comes to singing. It doesn't happen by chance, but it has to be intentional. If you're going to depend on chance, you're going to really set yourself up for failure because it doesn't work like that. It has to be... A private do the analogy about chewing <laughs> <laughs> so that they can <laughs> you have to chew it. Okay, the best form of food that to see is before eating, and the next best form is how it nurtured your body, your body. is in your in your body. I don't want food in another form except before it's eaten 
and the nature of your body. What, I'm, what we mean by that, okay, maybe you can carry on from What that. he means by that is that while you're still chewing it, we don't want to hear it. So while you're still trying to figure it out on your own, don't stand in front of the congregation and expose it mm-hmm. because it's not ready yet. You're still working on it. You're still chewing it. You're still chewing those nutrients. So when you st- while you're still chewing and you stand up in front of people and you start experimenting with it. It's going to stink. It's going to stink. <laughs> it's going to look terrible. Have you seen someone who talks while they're chewing food? Oh, it really no. looks bad. Yeah. Um, someone, while, while they, they're still chewing, but they're talking to you, it, you can see the bits and pieces and it looks disgusting. Mm. It really, it doesn't look nice. It's yes, not a food is a good thing. But food is a good thing because it is for the nourishment of the body. Mm. Right. But if you're still chewing it, do not expose it and do not bring it to the congregation. Mm. Let it nourish you first. Yeah. And when it has nourished you first and you have perfected it, then go to the congregation and the congregation will appreciate it because they can see the nourishment. It, is also re- it also even goes, goes back to, it, it not only applies to um, the, the musicality of it, of you rehearsing and so forth and so forth. But it also goes, goes down to when you're given a, so- a certain song, ne? it has to hit you first. Mm. It, it has to minister to you first. Because the truth of the matter is you cannot send people to a place that you've never <laughs> been yourself. Yeah. You know? It's, it's so important that as, as a vocalist, the song has to hit you first. To the point where you throw it off an offering. Exactly. You know? <laughs> to yourself, like, it, oh, man. <laughs> it, has to, it really has to minister to you deep, you know? Mm. And when it ministers to you deep, then Definitely. it will do the same for others. You know, sometimes we, we, we can try I, can to... Can I come in here? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, when you say it, it has to minister to me deeply... I can bet you that there are people who, who would meditate on the song, pray, uh, go into an all night, on Saturday night, they will not sleep, get ready for Sunday. <laughs> but yet, it still doesn't bring that thing out. Yeah. So what, what is wrong? They are getting the spiritual side. The song means a lot to them. But they are not taking yeah. time to maybe, let's say, okay, what other word can I use for the word praise in the song. Oh. You're not making time for that. So can you speak to that? Because yeah. Yeah. I think it's 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 really important, Pastor Edwin, because it's not just there are so many um elements that put together this masterpiece. It's not just one color. You don't just use red only on your canvas, on your painting. But when you get a collage of your reds and your greens and your blues, it's all these certain elements when they're all put together, then they create a masterpiece that is pleasing to the master. So as you're saying that it's, it's not just about um, prayer and, and a whole night prayer and so forth. It's, it's also not just only, the practicing the musical and the runs and and um having a riff and a run for every single phrase it's it's not about that but it's more of a combination of all these different elements and the thing is pastor edwin if there's nothing within you you, where you're going to draw from anyway whether it's technical whether it's technical or spiritual spiritual. yeah it's vocabulary it's exactly (laughs) Your, yeah. you, it's, it's not something that you can do on Saturday night for Sunday. Right. It, is, it, it has to be a consistent lifestyle. It, it, it really requires consistency. It's not something that you can just do on Saturday nights because Sunday is the big day of the song. No, 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 no. It's something that you've got to be, um, you know, meditating upon from Monday. Yeah. You know, practicing it. Even two weeks before, if you possibly can, fill so, so, yourself in order for you to pour out. Let me just make an example. Okay, great. An example for a guitar player. A guitar player plays with his fingers, mm-hmm. but a guitar player should get to a point where he plays, and we feel like he doesn't think here. 
but he thinks he here. Thinks, yeah. Because it's wow. too far to, to go all the way. But the way this person has worked on his skill, it's, it gets to a point where his fingers know what the mind is going to think. Yeah. But that, that has taken a lot, a lot of time and repetition. Consistency. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so um, let me come to you, Intokozo. So typically, when you are coming to minister, tell us what yeah. you do. Let's say you, <laughs> you, you, because I remember when you were doing the deep in love. I mean, we just gave the song to you a, a night before, a day before. And yeah. up to now, when I listened to the song, in fact, Pastor Nat was blown away. Up to now, she, he talks about it. How did you manage to interpret the song? She, 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 she. Yes, that. <laughs> so, all of us on this platform, we want to know okay, this is a proper guide from Intercoso how she goes about it. This is from, from in Quebec, how he goes about meditating on the word for the song, for the song, specifically what he's going, she's going to do. Thank you. Um, for me, Pastor Nett, um, it, it, it goes back to what I said earlier about consistency. You cannot pour out of an empty jar. Right. Um, so I have been consistent in, um, in growing my gift, in nurturing my gift. I have been consistent. I'm not, please, I'm not blowing my own horn. I'm trying, I'm trying to explain <laughs> so that you can get it <laughs> as, as simple as, as possible. Um, I have by all means tried to be consistent in prayer. I have by all means tried to be consistent in reading the word. So hence it was easy for me to quickly tap into the message of the song that you had written. Because when I saw the lyrics, I'm deep in love with you, scripture mm. started flowing in my mind. So it's okay. Scriptures wow. about, about love and about how I love God. Um, it's, oh, personal yes. it's, it's, it's personal, you know, because there was a, a there's a love of God in the, in inside. the inside. So why don't you say something about <laughs> love. it? You know, scripture pops up, you know, scripture pops up, experiences pops up, you know, moments um, Mm -hmm. pop up where God's love, um, you know, overwhelmed me in a certain day, you know. So it it is really important to be consistent in in seeking God's face, consistent in reading his word, even when you don't understand why you're reading it at that time. Because Mm -hmm. some point in the future, you're Mm going to need that word that you read maybe a month ago, but it didn't quite make sense then. But a month later, it will make sense because you need it for a future, you know, um, experience or a future moment. So it's important that you're constantly, you're ready in season and out of season because you never know when God's opportune time will come. So that that is what I do, Pastor Edwin. So... I always make sure that I'm constantly ready, no matter what. And that day I was tired. <laughs> Too tired. I was so yeah. tired that day. I, I was sick that day. I had a tummy bug. I, do you remember the morning service? I was, I, I, I was helped by doctors at church. I had the tummy bug. But because I've always strived to be ready, no matter what. No wow. sickness will hold me back. Wow. When God says, this is the moment I need to be ready and, and jump on it and do what God wants me to do at that time. L- let me go a bit deeper. i um, still on that point. So what I'm learning from you is that one, you chew on scriptures a lot in and out of season, whether there is administration or not, you are just chewing. If a song mm-hmm. finds itself on that path, you pull out something that goes with it. Good. Yeah, just come. You, you also get, you also have experiences that, when you hear a song, you can connect with one or two experiences and bring it out. Very good. So I get a feeling that um, when you are standing on stage, is it that what you are going to say from your meditation, you get exactly what you are going to say or it becomes extempore whilst you're on stage. So this is the example. So is it that, okay, in this song, I connect to this experience. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this song, this scripture, blah, blah, blah. So tomorrow, that's what I'll, that's what I'll do. Or 
I just go, mm, ah, ah, tomorrow, let's see. Maybe I'll remember whatever I want to say. Is it planned or not planned? Even after the meditation, is, is, there, is, there, is the interpretation that you put on your song planned or not? And that, that would include the, the notes and the melodies you are singing. Is it also planned or not? Because you know, sometimes um, a friend of mine, Pastor Zaya, will say that you have, the, you have to think before it comes out of your mouth. Most people don't yeah. think, it just, uh, then they just catch themselves. So tell us, both melody, the melodies you use, and the things you say after your meditation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a firm believer that it is important to plan. Um, it is really, really important to plan. Um, planning speaks to preparation. If you don't have a plan, that means that you're not prepared. Um, it is very important to have a plan because plan, having a plan means that you are prepared no matter what happens. Right. So the, with me, I always plan. I always plan what I'm going to say. Um, for example, just to be practical, um, when I'm given a song, there's always um, the beginning, there's always an introduction. In, in our gospel scene, there's an introduction, maybe a verse and maybe a chorus, maybe another verse, maybe another chorus, maybe a bridge, and then maybe there's a vamp at the end. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> you know, at the end. But what I like to do is I, I like to think about the song holistically, where it starts, and where it ends. What do I want to accomplish at the end of the song? Um, what, do, what, what, what needs to be the result at the end of the song? At the end of the song, what do I want to see? You know, what do I want um, people to experience? What do I want people to hear? And what do I want people to feel out of it? So it all boils down to the end result that I want. And then from the end result, I go back to the beginning and then I plan my plan out everything. Um, I like to space everything out. I like to pace myself as the song goes on. So, for example, if there's a first verse um, of any song, I don't like to do too much in the first verse because the first verse for me, you are introducing the song to the listeners. You do not want to bombard them with too much info at the beginning. Um, you want to keep it as simple as possible so that they can um, join in with you and flow with you, you know, because at the end of the day, you're taking um, people on a journey, you know, when you're leading a song, you're taking them somewhere, but you can't, you can't haphazardly just drag their arms and say, I we quickly going to the, to the vamp or you just drag, we're dragging you to the bridge. You know, it has to be a journey. We know we're, we're taking a stroll, a stroll somewhere, you know, we're going somewhere, come, come along with me, you know, we're moving somewhere. Um, unless you're in a tight spot and you have like two minutes, then it's a different story. Um, <laughs> you know, and then you have to rethink your plan. But in this case, let's say we have five minutes of a song that we have to minister. So the beginning, the first verse for me is always just take it slow because you're introducing it, stick to the melody. Um, the melody is your friend. <laughs> Uh, make sure that you know the melody without the runs. Sometimes, you know, because of the things that we listen to and we hear all these runs and all these nice, juicy, <laughs> you know, these nice things that, that, you know, that singers do nowadays. And it gets you so excited to the point that you don't even know what's the melody of the song, you know. Kanti, the melody is extremely important the melody is is the character of the song you know and the melody helps you tap into the heart of the song um so it's extremely important that you know the melody and at the beginning stick with the melody and as you go then you build up slowly um to the chorus you know still taking it slow if there's a second verse then you can be a bit more stern on your second verse um but you're not at the climax yet um, so it's just taking it up a notch. Um, then moving on to the, to the chorus after the verse, obviously, that's the second, second chorus, you know. So there's got to be a difference between the, the first chorus and the second chorus after the second verse. 
And then in some cases, there's a bridge. You went to the bridge. The bridge is like, hey! So that's a preparation, that's for, preparation an explosion. for an explosion that's coming. So <laughs> you, you, you need to, you know, we're like, come on, come on, come on. Pick up the pace. You know, you're slowly picking up the pace and you're moving to that vamp where it's suddenly an explosion. And yeah. everybody's like, how did we even get here? But I'm liking it. <laughs> you and know? it's got singing. And, then, and everybody's... In with it because why? Because you have taken them on a journey with them. You literally took people's hands and you said, "Come on, walk with me. We're going on a journey." And 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 that is how I see. I do it. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in planning it out um, because I find that when I plan it out, it is so much easier for me to allow the Holy Spirit to use me when I have a plan. Because when the Holy Spirit works within a plan, then I don't find myself lost. Mm. When I don't have a plan, that's where you will find yourself lost and not knowing what to do and where to go when the Holy Spirit is moving. It's important that you have a plan so that as the Holy Spirit moves, you flow with him. Because if you don't have a plan and the Holy Spirit lands you're just going to be confused and you won't know what to do because the holy spirit's arrival can i need you I, I need you to say that in capital letters if you can say it in zulu say it in every language i need to <laughs> get that that when, when when you don't plan the holy spirit comes to take over and you are lost but you when you lost. plan and he takes over you are never lost i just love yeah. it I love that sweet it is, It's I absolutely that. true. And just to add into that, from mm -hmm. the point of view of a band, yes, what, what a joy it is to be accompanying a singer like that. Mm. Because, because you feed off from that kind of a singer. Right. You know, she gives you direction. Because at the end of the day, this person is right in front of us. There's this, he, she is a singer. There's the choir and the band. Everybody's feeding off from this person. Mm -hmm. If this person doesn't have a plan, doesn't know what she's or he's doing. It's a disaster. <laughs> you know, so this is the case where I, I usually tell you instrumentally, the song starts and we are on the verse and the drama, oh my God, is on fire and <laughs> we are hearing toms and rows and I mean, where we shouldn't hear them. And, and you guys have just given us this, especially for praise and worship team and, and, and ministry groups. Let me ask this question. So let's say now you are pacing up on your song from gradually, you are taking us on the journey. We just move from, um, let's say, we just move from Ransbeck. We are going to Santin. We are actually heading towards Soweto, but we... We are gradually moving. Uh, but you can see that if you look at the, let's say you look on the stage, you see the people, you see the lead person so much on fire. And sometimes you feel that the babies are laid back. So this question will first, I want in Toko, uh, sorry, in Quebec to speak to it first. How do you gradually, and what do you do to bring your, your babies and your choir? To the same piece to measure up with your your lead voice for example we are we are on the bridge and we are the, the lead singer is dying on the song and the babies are living and eating they are they are okay <laughs> they are living and eating yes yeah, so you 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 go yeah they go yeah and they so what do we do what do you usually do to help because i'm I, telling you, this really I, 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 <laughs> To <laughs> fire them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Not after the lockdown. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't fire them. No, you can't fire people. <laughs> you know, before, before, you, before she says that, I was going to say, thank God I'm able to hire my own baking singers. But in the church, it's a different case. Yeah. You, you work with what you have available for you. But I think it's very important, Pastor Edwin, that we teach up. Mm -hmm. You know, we teach our people and also demonstrate these things, you know. Uh, with our worship team, sometimes we'll watch videos together 
and just pinpoint these things. Look at that one. What is she doing? Mm. Why is she doing that? You know, mm. because in a professional world, uh, we hire musicians not based on their singing only, but on their uh, expressions as well on stage. You know, we mm. always say this when we talk to them uh, out there is that when you get into the stage, you have to assume a specific character. Yeah. Whether you like the song, out or of not. the 10 songs mm. that you're performing, probably there's this one or two songs that you don't like that much. But once you get into that stage, it's not about you. Yeah. You know, it's about who you're performing for, whether it's an audience of one, which is a Christ, or whether it's our audience, which is our people who, have, who might have bought tickets to come to our shows. You know, I don't like this song. I don't like this singer. But it's not about you, you know. Mm. When you get there, you assume this character. Yeah. But as I, I said earlier, that some of the things they need to be taught, you know, and demonstrated as well to our singers. Right. So that they understand. Because someone would say, but I thought I was there with you. Mm. But mm. from someone who was sitting down looking at this singer, I was like, ah, this singer, is, it, she, she looks like she was just somewhere mm. in town. And the, and, and the lead singer is... Is 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 which is is at the right hand of the right hand of Jesus? <laughs> you know, we have to move together because we always tell our team that as we are standing on stage, we are all worship leaders. Yeah. For order, we need someone to to be yeah. and to lead. You know, but we are all worship leaders. Our audiences, our congregations, they look at how we do things. They see us raising our hands. They. We are teaching as we do this. They see us raising our hands. They know how, okay, we have to raise our hands. They see us just getting deep, even in expressions in how we do things, you know. Mm. Some of it might sound like it's acting, but it gets to a point where you don't even realize that you're doing it. It just yeah. happens because you've, you've done it a couple of times, you know. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's what I can say. Yeah, and, and not only watching um, videos of, of how it's done, mm. also try to get people that you know who do it really well mm. to come to the to 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 um, a session mm. and physically demonstrate how it can be done. Because mm. sometimes our people think, I it's it's a it's an overseas thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes mm. our African people sing, I, it's a, uh, there's machines in there. Um, I, it's, <laughs> stems. It's, it's, it's something, yeah, it's something <laughs> that you're going to get, and eh, it's stems. It's something you're going to get in America. You're not going to get it here in Africa. But the truth is there are people who can actually do it. So find a soprano and alto and a tenor who can demonstrate what you want um, so that they can see, see, see it, physically see mm. it. And, and be exposed to it and see that it is possible. Because sometimes um, what, what really um, causes our people not to grow is that sometimes they feel like I ain't gay, but we are just volunteers. You know, that's not possible for yeah, us. We are just, professionals. that's for professionals, no. you know. And whereas when they can actually see people doing it in front of them who are just like them, then that also gives them that, oh, okay, so it is possible. So, okay, so I can also do it. That also really helps as well. Oh, okay. It's um, is it all right to 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 sing a song um and really mimic the voice that is in the original? So, um, Edwin talks this way. This is my sound, but I'm coming to lead worship, and the song is like ah, oh, mm, that's how this, it's in the original. So, just for people to feel the same way. Should I? Should I? And and this this the exercise is when people learn all the way they learn the tongues in the songs, you know, like what 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 you are doing, what you are doing. Uh, I can I can tell you somebody has dressed just like how you dressed in Jehovah is your name. Oh. Formed it just to get in there, but uh, um, is it necessary to really sound like in Tokozo? Pitch like in Tokozo. Uh, talk, talk like in Tokozo when you were talking. Uh, so that you, <laughs> so you get the effect <laughs> of song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's, 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 there, there's so much like we can say about that. Um, the, the truth of the matter is when you look at it from the body of Christ perspective, 
um, we all have a part to play in the body of Christ. And everybody has to play their part as God has bestowed upon you as an individual. And when you do not operate as the finger and decide to be a toe, when God himself had planned for you to be a finger, then that means you have let the body of Christ down. Oh, wow. It is important for us, as we are part of a body, it is important to remember that our individuality yeah. is just as important because we, every single part, had, everyone has to play their part in order for the body to function fully in the way that God and Christ expect us to function man. in the earth. You, you know, be you, man. <laughs> it is so important that you be yourself. You can draw inspiration. You, it is, you can draw inspiration. It is perfectly expected. It is, I've been inspired by others. Um, I also went through the phase of mimicking others. Um, I think it's also part of growth. Um, you, you start off admiring certain people. You start off loving the way they do things, their mannerisms. Um, and and you, you start doing it yourself because it just looks nice, you know. It looks, it looks cool. And, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and you, you get drawn to them because you're constantly listening to them. You get inspired by them. Um, but it has to reach a point where you, you yourself decide, Uguti, from this inspiration, talk also must emerge out of this, you know, from being inspired by all these incredible musicians, must come, must come out of mm. that. Pastor Edwin needs mm. to come out of that. We need it. We need <laughs> Pastor Edwin. We need every single person. We need everyone in order for the body to function as Christ needs us ready for when he returns. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um I I, I want to ask um let's let's go a bit practical. So what are some of the techniques that you deploy as a singer? All things being equal now, what are some of the techniques that you deploy as a singer when it comes to making people feel the emotion in the song? Bringing emphasis to 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 a song you know i know it can be expressed through the vocal so how what are some of the techniques that uh, and if you could demonstrate some of them for us would be grateful um what are the techniques yo there's quite a <laughs> there's quite a number so, um but but this performance uh, yeah. yeah um but but there's a difference near past the edwin between yes. techniques and gimmicks um, yeah. Gimmicks is is the stuff that just gives people goosebumps and like woo, <laughs> you know. And the the stuff that gets people excited but leaves them empty, right. you know. And that's not what we want. We no. we we don't want we don't want um, to get people excited and leave them empty. No. We want people to be excited but leave full at the same time. Right. So um, that's where the techniques come in and we push aside the gimmicks. Um, there, by um, techniques, um, there are certain things that you can do to emphasize a certain point. Um, for example, you can emphasize a, a certain phrase or a word. You can say maybe three times, ish, zoom, English. <laughs> you can say maybe three times. Uh, for example, um, uh, give me a song. Um, um, what was the song you're talking about? Alpha and Omega. Okay. Yeah. Um, we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. And then I'll leave. We give you all the glory. glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship you. We lift you up. We 
lift our hands and we worship you. So sometimes when you want to emphasize a certain point, it's okay to repeat um, either the word or a phrase more than once. But don't repeat it five, 20 times, million times. That's becoming a gimmick. Uh, then it becomes a gimmick. <laughs> um, but repetition helps emphasize um, a certain phrase or a certain line um, that you want to um, send forth for the people. Um, what, what else is there? It could be, <clears throat> okay, what I, I can come from the performance point of view because why I'm saying performance, because what we do is, is an art. Yes. Music is an art. There are things that singers do that, 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 that uh, someone might say it's a gimmick, but it's a crowd pleaser. <laughs> and you want to please your crowd, crowd when you sing. Yeah. Sometimes long notes work. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, long notes work. I'm just saying this because sometimes a singer would say, but I run out of ideas. You know, there was a spoke about the fact that when you start a song at the beginning, you just want to uh, keep it very simple. That's pacing yourself. That's mm. saving your ideas so that mm. you just pace them nicely. So you, you, you blame that at the end, I'll start giving more. But for now, I'm just giving less. You know, one of the things that you can do to save your bullets mm. or your points mm. is to sometimes use long notes as a singer. You know, we just pull that we note. We give you all. While everybody else is continuing, it works. And it works. You know, it works, yeah. you know. They say long notes are crowd pleasers. That's one of the things that I can I can say. Yeah. Uh, it can be categorized also as improvisation, but yeah. it works. Yeah, and what else is it? Uh, I'm just trying to think about the question. Uh, okay. Okay, and 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 sometimes um, we have the the misconception that um, when the song is at the climax, then that means High notes. Ah. Um, the climax of the song doesn't always mean high mm. notes. Um, it, it, is, it is so important for a singer to, to be present in the moment and, and listen. Um, I, think, I think that's one thing that, that I love doing um, is sometimes it's okay to just be still and just listen, you know, in order for is you Is that to... why you're singing? Yeah. While the song is continuing? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes it happens while the song is continuing. I would, mm. I would, I'd, I'd just keep quiet for a moment because sometimes when we, we bombard the song, wow. we do not leave space for the Holy Spirit to speak to us and give us direction. Oh. Do, does that make sense? Yes. Um, there, there are moments where while the song is going on, you need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you at that time and listen to his direction. Because at the end of the day, we are, God is using us. We are just the vessels, you know, and in us being the vessels, it, it can't always be, me, 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 driving the stay narrative open. all the time. Yeah, I need to stay open and listen to what God is saying and listen to where God wants me to go. Um, there are moments, a lot of them, where even where the song is at its loudest, I would just take a second or two and just be quiet and be still and listen. We'll see, where does the spirit of, lo of the Lord, where is the spirit leading me mm. at this time? Mm. Do I need to do it again? Do, is there something I need to emphasize or do I need to break it down? You know, um, it's, it, it, it is so important that in the loudness of the song and in the loudness of the climax, that as the leader, I need to listen. Mm -hmm. I have to train my ear to listen to the spirit of the Lord. The loudness around me mm -hmm. must not drown the voice of God speaking mm -hmm. to me while I minister at that point in time. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, so the other thing one is saying that, that we always teach our team is that there's mm -hmm. a point where a song needs to be driven by a lead singer. 
but there's a point where a song just flows by itself. That doesn't really need yeah. you to. Come on, there. <laughs> Sometimes it needs you to just. Yeah. Let it be. Yeah, just back. enjoy it as well. Just yeah. enjoy the presence. Yeah. 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 I think. Great. Was... Great. 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 Um, so if you if you just join us or I I don't think anybody has joined us so far. Is it the, no more people are joining <laughs> because uh, well we are still um, here with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mbata and uh, they've been a blessing. We want to go into a time of questions. Um, people have questions out there. I see their hands are already raised. <laughs> that <laughs> don't pass me by. So we're going to go straight into the question. I see, I'm going to go according to the order that I have here. I have Lex, Lexus iPhone. I guess it's, I, I know the person. It's one of my soprano singers, but he's a guy anyway. Uh, <laughs> Doris, I'm going to go according to the, the, the names here. So um, my, my, so Lexus, um, Isaac, you're welcome. Oh, hello, Pastor. Hello, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank great, you very great, much. great, 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 great. You pay for this after after the meeting, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I will. <laughs> please ask, ask maximum two questions and brief, please. Okay. okay. All right. So my first question is that um, I know they have been to Ghana a couple of times, and I want to find out um, what has been... Um, some of the things that they have realized about our singers that they think we are really not doing well that they want to touch on uh, and then um, another um, the second question is that how do you please um, singers as in in terms of their parts soprano alto and tenor is it that um, someone with a higher voice or a in terms of range, it's supposed to be a soprano, someone with a mid is supposed to be an alto or tenor, that kind of thing. So how do you actually identify um, people in placing them with their or correct parts? I don't know if you get my question. If, if, if I had a lockdown cake, I would have sent it to you right away. Thank you for that question. <laughs> 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 um, so his question is about how you, how you see Ghanaian... Um, uh, even by saying Ghanaian music uh, and how we sing, especially how we sound. I know South Africans have high ranges. Uh, um, on the landscape of Africa, you might put South Africa first and Nigerians, female singers second. Then you come to Ghana. Um, for some reason, we don't have a lot of vocal power. So... Um, what do you see and what do you think we should do? Please be very frank with us. We won't tell anybody. You tell us what we should do. <laughs> yeah. And the exactly. second one would be how we should be into parts. Thank you. What do you think? No, you answer. <laughs> I get it. You must I answer. Must talk <laughs> to you. <laughs> it's so difficult. It's 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 not an easy question. Um, more especially because um, we've got friends <laughs> who are also fabulous. Um, so it's it's not an easy question because you're gonna get in, in, get us in trouble with our friends. <laughs> I'm you're just covered. Kidding. Um, um, but for me, I can I tell you what I love about um. No, I want to tell you what, what I like about you guys, and then he can do. No, 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 no. I want to tell you what I love about you guys. <laughs> no, I, I, listen, please, please, I go Just tell us. We wait for you. Tell us. <laughs> what, what I like about you guys, what I have seen, is that you, you know, we miss out on this room. This news. It's been serious. Eh, hey, nah. I think that that's what I love about you guys is that you you take it seriously from from what from what I've experienced um you know sometimes you get to, to other parts of the world and um you've been given a group of people who will um uh, back you uh, for a, a a certain concert or whatever and you know, sometimes we should could just tell my man, take this seriously, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not putting enough effort, you know. Um, but what I love about Ghanaians is that you guys take it seriously, you know, even though some 
some of you don't do this full time. You know, uh, you, most of you guys have day, day jobs, but when it comes to music, you still, you know, take it seriously. You don't, um, you don't play around with it. And, and, and I love that about, about the culture of, 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 of Ghanaian people is that, you know, when it comes to something that they love, they take it seriously. You know, they don't downplay um, the seriousness of music and making an effort. Um, yeah. Uh, what about what about what about what you think we need to improve? What you've observed? You've been to a couple of concerts. I think, I think what 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 I would say would would, would um, you guys would need to improve on is 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 maybe giving yourselves more time um, for rehearsing and perfecting your gifts. Um, because what I've seen is that a lot of people, um, a lot of singers or a lot of vocalists, they have day jobs. Um, and um, where you're working during the day and then you come to rehearsal, by the time you get to rehearsal, you've had a long day. Maybe your boss was really cranky and was horrible um, to you. You get to rehearsal. You've just got all of these things thinking about the following day. Yo, I've got um, a project. I've got this, I've got that, I've got... And it's totally understandable because that is how life has been structured at this particular time, you know. But I wish you guys could give yourselves just a little bit more time, you know, just to... Just an extra hour per day um, where you just commit to either doing vocal exercises, commit to... Um, researching some um, breathing exercises, whether it's um, learning a new scale, you know, just give yourselves maybe 30 minutes to an hour each day of just focusing on the vocal um, aspects of your lives. And I promise you that will bring a huge difference because the truth is the more that you exercise the gift the more the gift gets better and the more the gift grows and the more you actually discover things about the gift that you didn't even know existed. You know, some things were hidden because you were too, you didn't give yourselves a little time, you know, a little extra time to research and pursue and, and, you know, figure out to see how far can I go with this gift? So I, that I, would I be my like that A lot of um, South Africans are, are musicians are more full time. Is full that, time yes. yes that is very true okay that's true that's how that's how it is here a lot a lot of the musicians um in south africa they are full-time musicians so there is nothing else oh i don't want to make people out as if they're lazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are not lazy <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that don't, don't worry <laughs> but 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 that's how it is we we when we when we go music, we go full time in Sorry. music um, because it's not it's it's difficult to maintain a strong musical career and have a strong impact mm -hmm. when you have a full time job in, in South, South Africa, Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the the systems that are operating think, yeah. in the industry in in our nation presently. Nice. So most of the people that you see on DVDs on TV um, who time? are they're all basically full time in music. So that is oh. the advantage that we have is that we are full time in this. We don't we don't have another job. <laughs> um, this is it. Our rehearsals. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Our rehearsals, Our rehearsals start, in the morning. start in the morning and end in the in the in the, in the, in the evening, late yeah. afternoon. Um so it's so as you go to work from eight to four, we have rehearsals from nine to five, yeah. you know. We, we so rehearse from seven to 11. <laughs> we have to work. That's, I mean, it's enlightening that you are telling us this. I mean, it's, thank you. Thank you, Ike, for that question. Um, can we speak to how to place parts? How to place parts? I think, I think he, asked, he asked it and answered it. It's, it's based on the range. Those who have high range can sing soprano. soprano. Those who have mid range can sing alto. Those who have low range can sing tenor. Those who have a lower range can sing baritone bass. Mm. You know, it's 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 as simple as 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 that. You know, some people are ambitious and they want to assume 
other parts, especially some guys today, you want, they still want to sing high notes of soprano and it becomes a problem sometimes, you know. I think it has to be based on your, your gifting range. and your range and your abilities. Thank you. Wow. And sometimes you'd find that altos, that you'd get an alto that can even sing soprano. Mm. For example, my music, um, for, for my music, my background vocals, vocalists sing high a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, because that's that's because th that's the kind of sound that I like, and because I'm also a soprano. So because I'm a soprano, I like everybody to be high, just high. like me <laughs> in my backing vocalist. So sometimes I get um, some altos. Some of my altos can reach sopranos oh because, God. but not high sopranos, but because of the fact that my music requires. Yeah my altos to have a wider range than your um, normal altos as well. So it also depends with the kind of music that you're going to be doing as well on how you place your people. Yeah. Let's take a question from Doris. Doris Hyde. Hi, Doris. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, my question is where, this. Where are you calling from? Mm. Uh, where are you listening to this from? From um, Ghana. Which part of Ghana? Ghana, Accra. Which part Accra. of Accra? Accra. Accra. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So please, this is my question. Yes. Please go what do you do when the lead singer is good, but the backers are bad? That's my first question. Jesus. <laughs> the lead singer is very good, but the backers are very poor and then you you don't have any reason to leave the choir but to be in the choir mm -hmm. and the second one is what mm -hmm. do you do when most choristers don't like you because you have a powerful voice mm. thank you okay <laughs> thank you sister doris if, if the question was to me i would force Welcome, it to dear. define what is good and bad because it's so important <laughs> to know what that means but but let's assume <laughs> That yeah. good means they are very technically good at singing, and poor means they are technically poor. At yep. Singing. Right, Doris. Poor. Yep. Okay, great. great. Right. Okay. So, Intercoso, please, Quebec, um, please. <laughs> do just that. What do you do? What do you do when they don't like you? Because no, you're powerful. That's the second one. The oh. first one is, <laughs> what do you do when you are the lead vocalist yeah. and the EVs are bad. Are bad. So, but you as the leader, you are good. Why are you using the baking singers that are bad? Okay, but what if you're in a church and you don't have the luxury of choosing? Of choosing, then, yeah. It happens. You have the luxury of choosing. That's, that's how it is, yeah. Sometimes you don't have the, the luxury gates are of open. Choosing. The floodgates are open. Anybody can <laughs> come in. So, I mean, the church is growing. You can't just tell somebody to leave the church because it's not good. So, manage it. What do you do? What do you do? It's so real. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? You pray. <laughs> you pray that God brings good sinners to your church. I'm telling you. Because you can't chase these people away. <laughs> and probably you can't train them because they are probably not even gifted as singers. They're just part of the choir because they are volunteers. They just, have, they love the they just have a heart to serve. <laughs> yes. Let's not deny the fact that sometimes it happens in our teams that there are people who are not supposed to be yeah. in the music department. Yeah. But because of shortage of volunteers, we have to use what's available for us. Yeah. And I believe that for every church, that's a season. Yeah. And that lead singer has to have that kind of understanding that you yeah. are in a season where you have to work with only what's, a, with what's, what's available, available for you. And you... Prayerfully so. You trust God that yeah. he will bring the right people yeah. to, for you to work with. But there's nothing you can do. You can chase people away. Yeah. But I believe that that should be a season. It can't just be your right. portion. It's, it's not your portion, Sister Doris. <laughs> no, you have um, to. We have prayed in our department. We yeah. have prayed singers out of um, the choir. When we have prayed, we didn't chase them out. No, we just prayed them out. You know, someone would just get a promotion, promotion. to go and live in. Let, let, let me bring the rose. Let me bring the rose. Let me bring the rose flower very close to your nose. 
Have you ministered yeah. somewhere and your babies yeah. are just not getting it? And <laughs> let me ask you that. Have you been somewhere? Oh, what did you do? You were singing, it, you, you modulated, and I don't know whether they demodulated or they, I don't know, but they did something. <laughs> Because <laughs> let me tell you what I do, and then she'll tell you what she does. Yes, okay. yes, please. What I do, I just stop them. I just do my vocal songs only without the babies. Because at that moment, there's nothing I can do. In, in the middle of the administration? Uh, the minister has to go. Yeah. What do you do? Because, yeah, no, but sometimes, Pastor Edwin, when you go to a place, always arrive early now. <laughs> So that you can catch the praise and worship. <laughs> if you didn't get a chance to rehearse yeah. with the praise and worship with the team, yeah. come early. And you change. So you can like, see it's is, not gonna work. is it workable or do I need to just do be on my own? Mm. Will I be able to to do what I have been um, sent out to do here? Or with this team? With this team or is this a is this a, 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 what, what is it? Is this a mission that I'm supposed to do on my own? Yeah. You know, um, that it's so important. Wow. I always, and not just so that you can case out no, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, what the talent, are they talented? Are they not talented? That's not the only reason why you should arrive early, no matter where you're going to minister. It also helps you to, to tap into the anointing of the house the hell, yeah. and to flow with the anointing of the house. Right you won't be able to flow with the anointing of the house as a as someone who has been invited if you just arrive just before you could go on stage it is it, it's not practically possible it's important for you to arrive early so that you can get get a feel of the atmosphere of the house so that you can flow with the house and feel how things are done in that house and the flow house. with the atmosphere of the house because no matter what you do you cannot be um, a a lone ranger in someone else's house you still have to operate within the house that you have been sent to and it's important for you to flow with the anointing of the house so you're saying that if i'm invited somewhere so friends if you are invited to go and minister go early uh and um, <laughs> sit in the the service pray with them yeah. and just assess the atmosphere, see the songs they are doing. You are coming with an English song. They are not doing anything near English. Then begin to yeah. revise your notes and all that. Very helpful. Yeah. Thought. Let's go to Richard K. Mensa um, for questions. Hello, Richard. Hello. Thank you for joining us. May I know Thank where you. you are speaking from? I'm speaking from Kumasi. Beautiful. Please go ahead. One question. No, no. Please, my question is, um, um, with the consistency, um, at times we get to um, to get carried away with other things in in life. In that, like most of us, um, really, um, how, how do I phrase this question? Um, my my my, my actual question is this: mm. How do we maintain the consistency? It would go like on for like two weeks, and then let's say on the third week we just we actually feel lazy or feel like giving up in a way. We just feel lazy. Let me use the word lazy. Yeah, like I for one play the guitar, and I'm also into the singing aspects. And with the guitar, I'm learning on my own, so that really like brings a lot of commitment. But at times. I would go consistent for two weeks and then all of a sudden I'll just. What's the question? Like, what's no. the question again? Just what's the what really? No, we, we, we understand what he's saying, Pastor Edwin. Okay, I, di I didn't get the question. Sorry, Richard. I didn't I get, get the, get the gist of his question. Okay, so, uh, okay. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Much. Thank you, yeah. Richard. I think it's very important as a musician to be patient with yourself. I think it's part of the questions that you've given us on the list, Pastor Edwin that you sometimes, you know, the truth is you can't learn it now and know it now. Some of these things, they take time, time. Right. Yeah. you know, and so it's very important to be intentional about being patient with yourself and knowing that, you know, uh, you know, this has made me appreciate people who are good in what they do because I respect the commitment that they've put because I know it takes years to 
master it. So it's very important. You're not going to start guitar this week and by the end of next month, you are on stage playing with the team. It doesn't work like that, you know. Those guys who are on stage playing there, they've been doing it for years and years, you know. It takes time. You have to be patient with yourself. And maybe sometimes you need to set goals for yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and pace yourself nicely uh, and be realistic about those yeah. goals as well. You know, you can't expect to be playing like... George so, Benson. George Benson, you know. <laughs> You know, it, it's, 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 and, and, and another thing uh, with my generation is that we, most of us, we started at 12, but the generation, the today generation, there's most of them, they start at five. You know, there's those kinds of differences. You have to understand those things that when you start, uh, when you start, when you're older, things are, are, are bound to be slower because probably you have work, you have few commitments, but a person who started while they're still young or they don't have other things to think about, it's easier for them to learn fast. So you have to understand those dynamics where you are and pace yourself nicely mm -hmm. and probably get someone that is going to hold you accountable so that when you get tired, they're going to ask you, hey man, how are you doing? Are you still practicing? Yeah. Where are you? You know, it's very important to get that feedback from someone as well. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to take three questions from three people. So I have Junior, Echo, uh, Samuel Owusu. So, uh, we will we'll mute your mic, okay? Yeah, both Junior, can we do that for Junior, Echo, and Owusu? Please make sure that there's quietness at your background while the other asks one question each, just one question each, so that they can just answer three questions uh, at a go. So, let's take Junior, uh, <coughs> then we'll go straight to Echo. Junior, you're welcome. Hello, hi. Yeah, I'm calling. I'm, I'm, I'm in Ghana, actually. Great. Nice. Okay. You're just one question, Junior. Thank you. Hello, Junior. <clears throat> hello, Junior. Yeah, I mean, for this meeting and organizing this. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Um, okay. Thank you. So, I wanted to ask something about the, the voice training. Do you have any um, something that can help uh, as we coming up uh, uh, musicians or artists or something to help us build on our gifting? You mean voice training? Specifically? Yeah, voice training. And, yeah. Okay. And all that, that can help us. Material. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for asking. Let's go to um, Echo. Echo Aqua. Hello, Echo. Hello, Echo. Hello. Yeah, Echo. Hello. Yes, can yeah. you please hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Where are you calling from? Or where are you speaking from? Sorry. I'm sure it's the network. Um, uh, Car breaks. Yeah, can you can you restart your question? Can you restart your question? Okay, um, I, I want to find out. Thank you very much, Rev. I want to find out how do you heal your vocal breaks? How do you heal the vocal breaks? As when you have cracks, how do you? Yes, cracks. Oh, Great question. Okay. Thank you. Great question. Let's go to Samuel Usu for the last bit of the three. So the last. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Samuel. Um, yeah. Um, good evening. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Welcome. Sir. Um, I want to ask that. Um, what? From, sorry. Is, please, I'm speaking from Sunyani. Great, Sunyani. Okay. Um, I try. Uh, I find it hard trying to cope with someone being a music director and a person not knowing how to play an instrument. Yeah. I, I I find it hard coping with that. So I want to ask, can someone be a very good music director and not know how to play an instrument? Is it possible like that? Thank you. Do, do you have one like that in your church or some? Have you seen anybody like that? Yes. Then it means the answer is it's possible. Yeah, and, and, but, and I want but, to know... But are you? I'm sure you want to ask for all of us. 
that um, if somebody is a, a music director and he's not able to play the keyboard or an instrument, what should he do? Yeah. I get yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Right. So okay. after this, we'll go to Ida Prince Kwame Nkrumah and uh, Nana H. So stand by. Let's go to our, our guests for the answers. Um, the first question from um, Junior. Um, <clears throat> do you have some materials that can help us sir, in terms of vocal um, training? <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't personally have any material out currently, um, but it's something we're working on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's something that uh, we're working on with Hubby. That's going to be um, a future. It's one of our future plans and one of our future goals. Um, so, but we don't have anything out now. Um, what I would suggest is um, Google is your friend. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, that's what that's what I believe. Uh, so, Junior, Google is your friend. Um, Google uh, vocal exercises. If you want to learn how to do the different vocal exercises, Google it. You know, go to YouTube and check out the different vocal exercises. If you do not necessarily trust a certain person, Google the person and find out who they are and what they have achieved and what they have accomplished. Um, it, the, the beautiful thing about technology is literally that everything is on your phone. You can just, you know, do one, two, three, and you're already there. Um, so it's, 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 it's really is that simple. Google, YouTube, you will find what you need. It is like in, in bucket loads. It is readily available. Um, the one that I recently discovered is um, one um, on YouTube called Take Lessons. Um, they've got some great musical, um, uh, uh, what you might call it. They've got breathing exercises there. They've sure. also got vocal Sorry. exercises. I'll, I'll share the link with Pastor Edwin, and then maybe he can post it later. Um, I saw some really interesting. They teach you how to actually breathe correctly as a vocalist, which is very, very important um, because breathing. You cannot if if you're breathing wrong, then you are singing wrong. Um, so it's really important that you get the foundation of breathing correctly right. And uh, what I'll do is I'll send the link of, of that particular teaching to Pastor Edwin, and then he can maybe post it and send it to you guys so that you guys can, can go through it and, and, and also get other lessons from Take Lessons on YouTube. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Echo was asking, how do you heal your crack vocals? <laughs> how do I heal my crack vocals? I keep quiet. I shut up. <laughs> that is that is it. You have to rest. If your vocals are cracking, that means you have overworked them. They are tired. They just need rest. Um, my family knows, my husband knows that if I have had a hectic season of singing and um, ministering uh, for whether it's a couple of days or weeks on end, when I come back home, silence. I communicate via SMSs. I write notes um, for everybody and I just keep quiet. I don't talk to anyone. I don't, um, and it's not because I'm not communicating. I'm still communicating, but I'm not using my vocal cords. My vocal cords are on rest. It is extremely important that when your cords are overworked, that you give them time to rest because they cannot function fully if they are overworked. So allow yourself and give yourself time to rest. If there is going to be a conference, for example, in our church, we have a conference beginning of the year that lasts the whole week. Um, so I always have to remind our team to pace themselves, pace themselves. Um, so you cannot be running around screaming on the first day of conference but you still expect to sing on Sunday. It's not going to work like that. You know, you have to be intentional. Um, you cannot be, um, you can't be careless with how you use your voice. If you know that you have a hectic week ahead that requires your vocal cords to be on tip top shape. So during conference, you know, have, you know, be intentional about how often you use your vocal cords. Don't scream at someone who is, and a meter away from you calling them, ah, da, da, da. you are using your vocal cords. You, it is very important to remember that the same cords that you use to talk are the same cords that you use to sing. So be aware of that 
and and manage that and be intentional of how you use them and utilize them and when they are cracked rest that is the best thing rest obviously there's also ginger teas and your lemons and your honeys and your gingers that also works but the number one thing is just shutting up <laughs> and the last question uh, i think maybe we'll go to Kobego, um, yeah, a director of mm-hmm. most of our people find themselves available to help people in their churches, but they don't have a formal training in directing uh, choir. So, if I don't know how to play the keyboard or an instrument, how else can I be better at directing? Give us some tips on that. Okay, the term is musical director, musical director musical director <laughs> so this person should know music a musical director must know music a musical director must know music <laughs> sometimes we have worship leaders who know music and they can be musical director sometimes you find that there's a musical director who can lead worship so this musical director can be a worship leader Sometimes you find a worship leader who doesn't know music, who knows how to lead worship. He cannot be a musical director. So if you have a desire to be a musical director, you need to learn music, know music, know the language. Sometimes you might find that you don't even know how, don't know how to play a musical instrument, but you know the music. You've studied music, you know what are the keys on the piano are, you know what are the keys on the guitars, you know the transpositions on the saxophone and the trumpet and the trombone, you know the theory. You can be a musical director because you know the music, you can communicate music and make sense to the musicians and to whoever that you teach in. So the struggle is sometimes some of us who, des- who desire to be musical director, but they don't have a desire to learn music. Then when you start to communicate, you don't make se- musical sense to the musicians and it becomes a problem. So I would encourage you, if you're a musical director and you don't know music, maybe go to school and study music, learn a musical instrument so that you are a qualified musical director. You cannot direct music if you don't know music. Amen. So can I, can I ask you a question? Oh, does does knowing music mean knowing an instrument? No, not necessarily. But but I'm encouraging you to know to play some musical instrument. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. And, sorry, sorry, Pastor Edwin. Just lastly, you you also need to have some leadership skills in it because someone will say, "I know music, so I can be, I should be a musical director." No, there has to be uh, some some sort of leadership skills to it because you're giving direction okay someone just said that don't go fighting your music (laughs) 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 if your musical director at church does not know how to play an instrument or does not know how to does not know music uh, it is not your place no to to hire and fire um that is not your department where you are you serve the leaders that God has placed um, you at. Wherever you are, God has placed you there and it is your responsibility <laughs> to serve your musical director that currently does not know how to play an instrument or that does not know music. That is how it is. Scripture is very clear on what we should do with authority and mm. we do not um, play around with that. Scripture, we still go by scripture. <laughs> Amen. Um, we should be ending this at 9 30 because uh we don't want to worry uh all of you out there because we can have this another time so let's 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 um go to samuel Ousu, edda and prince Nkrumah, uh and after that we will take the rest of the question from nana age and we'll come down and try and so make your questions very brief so that they can give you um Samuel is on, yeah. Samuel, where are you, where are you speaking from? I'm speaking from Sunyani, um, I've, I've already asked my question. Oh, oh sorry. Let, let's go to um, Edda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Edda and uh, Kwame Nkrumah. Okay, so my question. Um, is there a progression, like um, a format, um, like for the songs that we sing? You, you were saying that 
doing worship is like um, a journey. So like maybe start with Thanksgiving songs, there may be songs of ascent or something like that. And then I was also saying that um, you were saying about meditating. So some scriptures that you can use to meditate before administration. And then lastly, you oh. said... Um, you the, and then it's misleading all of us because then then makes it add more <laughs> questions. So <laughs> let's okay, like, last let, question, last no, question. No, no, last you, question. Have, you, have, you, have, you have asked about two. So let's let's take the others on the line. We have to close at 9.30. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let others ask the rest of the question. Okay. So um, um, let's go to Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Please, you, are, you can speak. Why? Yeah, hello. Oh. Um, okay, okay. Um, circle, circle. Oh, okay. Oh, Nkrumah circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nkrumah circle. Okay. Let's go. All right, I wanted to find out, I wanted to find out where if you teach your BVs, maybe on Saturday results, the harmony, and on the performance day, the following day, they tend to forget on, the, mm -hmm. on that very day, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> you do what? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is so real. This is real. The song yeah. about us in the harmony. No, we get it. We get it. it. We get it. And then the following, the following Sunday. Yeah, yeah. We get yeah, it. All right. I mean, it's all so right. real. Let's go to Nana H. Yeah. So maybe we can go to uh, Georgina. Because I, I, I'm not seeing the females ask the questions. I mean, so. I, 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 I want more ladies who ask some questions. So let's go to Nana H. We'll go to Georgina. Yes, and then we have Joan too. Yes, let's go. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hello, yeah, I'm calling from England, Bradford to proceed. Okay. And Bradford, yet to be present. Yeah. Oh, come. Um, <laughs> yeah, my question is yeah. um, how to avoid coughing um, during singing. How to avoid coughing during singing. And also, um, I've realized that, you know, South Africans have been able to project their own songs, you know, like on the international stage, Great. which Ghanaians, you know, until recently, you know, that we are doing because it's like we were, you know, um, sort of, you know, copying, you know, the, the Hill song, you know, like songs, not actually putting more effort into our own songs until recently. So my thing is, how were you able to do, do it, you know what I mean, without feeling not intimidated? By the Western world, but then you've been able to project your music very, very well, and uh, and also you know you know how to avoid coughing during singing. So thank you so much. Thank you. Let's go to um, is it Georgina? Yes. Hi. Thank you, Pastor Edwin. That is very good. Um, you know, opportunity to ask something. Let me bring you to a novel point of view. Um. I'm I don't have ill, you know, I would be saying you know, anything like that. So my question is, does learning to play, for instance, the keyboard help you to, you know, have any effect on your voice? Does it help you make it sing better as a vocalist, mm. like with no training at all? Does it have any impact? Great. Thank you very much. Let's go to um, Becky Edwards. Um, Okay, hold on. Ajime, yeah. yeah, your mic is on. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I've been Where waiting are you for speaking this from? I'm calling from. Um, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. I am um, asking on behalf of uh, the churches in diaspora in the United Kingdom. Um, where we don't have a place of worship, most of the churches we pack our instruments Sunday after Sunday, uh, right. and we unpack after services. Mm -hmm. And from from my perspective, I've done church in Ghana, and I'm, I'm doing church in 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 UK. It's totally different. So yeah. where in Ghana we've got the facility there, like Christ Temple, you can do all the rehearsals all day long. Nobody comes to you know drive you away. Here, we do our churches mostly in school buildings. And so the only times we are able to gather ourselves together is on the Sunday. So that makes rehearsal a very big deal. And mm -hmm. as I was hearing our sisters talking about um, uh, time 
to be set aside to develop ourselves. This is where we are at a handicap as a, as a group. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, what, what sort of um, ways can we still, whilst we're not able to come together as a group to, to rehearse, um, what sort of um, ways can we individually develop ourselves um, mm -hmm. so that when we come on Sunday, we can still be able to put up some sort of a performance, at least with leading of worship and stuff like that. The second question is with regards to instrumentation. Um, most of the uh, churches, I am um, um, one of the pastor's wives of one of the ICGC churches in, in UK. And um, our churches are starting churches. So we, we are kind of handicapped in terms of instruments or instrumentalists we can buy them but the people to play them is the issue here so um, um where hands are so limited which one or two instruments are most are vital for the service yeah yes most yeah. vital to develop um i mean my daughter's learned how to play the keyboard so she plays the keyboard keyboard Thanks. my son plays the drums but aside these two um or probably just these two. How can yeah. we make a, an effective worship session out of Great. that? Those yeah. are my I think two the question is Thank clear. you. Thank you so much. Let, let's let's hear from Joanne, uh, and uh, we'll go to our guest too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so my question is, I struggle a bit with um, stage fright. Especially when the crowd of the congregation is closer to me. If I'm on a really big stage, like maybe greater work stage, and the people are, I can barely see the faces, I'm, I'm fine. When the people are kind of closer, then it becomes difficult. So what um, advice, so yeah, what can you say to help me? What can I do to help me out of that? Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, would you want to start answering them now? I can take a last one, making the time. Ice spoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can. <laughs> you can ask. You can, you can allow one more, or let's just answer the questions. Can we start from the beginning? Okay. Um, the first question was from. Um, he was asking, um, is there a set um program when it comes to praise and worship, and um. For me, the for me, it, it all goes goes back to scripture. Um, Psalms 100, verse four says, "Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good; his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations." So, scripture is pretty clear that we must enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Um, and then from that thanksgiving and that praise. Worship will, will um, uh, what's the word? It will erupt out of, out of you because you started with thanksgiving and went on to praise and then worship will definitely um, develop out of you from that praise because you can't praise him. Praise always somehow just leads you to just worship somehow. And um, so we go back to scripture in terms of how it all should be structured. Um, scripture <coughs> is our... Um, our twenty. It's our. Uh, what's that? That's, That's the word. It's a manual. Scripture is our manual. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture is our manual. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. That's how we start, and then from praise, worship will automatically develop out of your spirits. And the next question was um, from Prince, who was asking about people forgetting what has been rehearsed. Yes, yesterday and to tomorrow they, they forget. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, I think depending on the, as you work with a specific team, you learn to understand how they work. Some teams you can't rehearse. In our church, I'm making an example, we have our rehearsals on Wednesday evenings. That's, only, that's the only time we have a rehearsal in the week and then we have to meet on Sunday. So I know for sure that if I'm doing a new song on a Wednesday, I cannot do it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I have to at least give them two Wednesdays or depending on the complication of the song or three Wednesdays before they're ready to perform it without forgetting it. So you have to be uh, realistic about that because sometimes we can be very ambitious. We want to do this song now. We want to mm -hmm. do this song now. Give them time. 
based on their musical abilities and their memories. You know your people that you can't rehearse this song on Saturday and perform it on a Sunday. You need to give them at least a couple, a couple of days of before it's, it's, it's ready. Yeah, I think that's, what I, that's how that, I believe that with enough time, a singer who's serious is capable of getting it right at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah, that the is the friends, and the next one was, was from Nana, I think. Yes, um, how to avoid coughing while um, singing. Sure. Um, I don't know if people noticed that I have a bottle of water that I'm drinking a lot um, because of the that coughing issue, um, and I'm not even singing, but I'm talking. But because I'm talking, I'm utilizing my vocal cords, and they're working over time. So it's important for me to make sure that my vocal cords are always hydrated in order for me to limit um, the urge to cough. If that's, that's number one. So always have some water close by to eliminate, to help eliminate the urge to cough. And another thing is um, what I was taught, oh, we should all know that coughing is not good um, for a vocalist um, because when you cough, there is a scratch that happens on your vocal cords. And that is something that we do not want. So by all means necessary, try and avoid a cough. That's why sometimes when you cough, you end up feeling like, hey, my voice is going because I've been coughing too much. Because that's exactly what coughing does. It, it, it utilizes your vocal cords in a very rough and drastic way that they shouldn't be vibrated in. So to avoid coughing, another thing that I learned from um, the great Spongi Lukumano, she's a great, um, one of our greatest opera singers here in our country. She's a legend. She taught me that whenever I, I, I feel an urge to cough, swallow. That's, that's just it. So the best way to try and avoid coughing is swallow, swallow spit. That means there's a build up of the spit at the back of your throat. You're not swallowing, swallowing as often as you should. So, when, so those are the two things that I do, is I make sure that I swallow as often, I swallow as much spit as often as I possibly can um, to avoid the buildup that gives me then an urge to want to cough. And number two, drink a lot of water as well. Okay, and she followed up with a question, how do South African project, how, how did you, end up projecting your, your kind of songs. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, by, by projecting, what does she mean? Does she, she mean she means, vocal I mean, projection? How, how, I mean, how you guys have been able to take your songs to transcend beyond South Africa to the world uh, as okay. compared to Ghana? Uh, Ghanaian music that is now really rising up. Um, yeah. you guys really, so she wants to, she wants to know how you guys made it. Uh, uh, I I don't have a straight answer to that because that has been happening even before I joined the industry. Yeah. And most of the time when we travel in Africa, we realize that people know so much of our music, especially from Jazz Celebration, which is I think the biggest brand in gospel music in SA. So when we get there, we realize people know, they're still asking us even from the songs from Joyous Five. And we're like, yo, we were not even there then, <laughs> you know. So I think the guy, the industry in South Africa was able to, to expose our music to outside South Africa. And that, that has really helped us a lot. And I believe that we also have our part to play in doing that, in making sure that people know what's happening in our country. And I really understand why she or he's asking that question because when we travel, when we started traveling in Africa, we realized that there's so much of good music, but we don't have it in our country. We don't know it. Mm. Um, it's maybe it might be because we're not exposed or maybe the musicians are not doing enough the job to, to get to themselves the out yeah. there. And the question is how, I think that person is actually throwing it back to us. About how, how would we advise them to do it? I think one of the things that's important is collaborations as well, you know. Let um, me just make an example. And also, uh, we were invited to Ghana to do some work by a friend of ours. That's where we got to meet John Metal. And then we invited John Metal to, to SA and she, to do something with Dogozo, and she got to do some stuff, some Ghanaian stuff, you know. So those things, as as you know that that kind of 
uh, exchange. exchange has really helped us uh, getting ourselves across to Ghana. And I think the more we develop those kinds of relationships, we get more, our music get, gets more exposure. I know that sometimes it's not easy because someone is going to say, give me a call tomorrow from this meeting. It's like, Nobel, I, want to, I, I want to do a song with you, you know. It's, 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 it's based on relationships, you know. Relationships. And we need to allow relationships to grow as well. Because one of the things that you do, we do, you know, some uh, a lot of uh, geometrical music is being played in our radio stations here, especially our Christian radio stations now here in SA because they love Ndogozo and they always follow what Ndogozo is doing there. Or oh, he did a song with Joe Metal, who's Joe Metal? And they play the, the duet to a point where they get into uh, Joe Metal's albums now. They started playing his albums. And people start asking, who's this Joe Metal? To a point where he starts doing a lot of work in SA. So collaborations. I would say they're very key because you want to get into the radio in that particular country. And when people hear those songs on radio, they start singing them in churches as well. Great, great. I would have followed up by asking, uh, is there a policy that um, protects your music, a percentage of South African music being played in the, in, in the Republic of South Africa uh, as compared to foreign songs? So, so you don't hear a lot of Ghanaian songs invading your space uh, is intentionally protected. Is, is there policies like that, that maybe by SAMA or, or I don't know, whichever? Um, is there uh, a policy, a percentage of local um, A copyright music? group or something? They would say they eat, but man, it's quite a struggle here in SA because in actual fact, we're still fighting for our music local music because we still hear a lot of uh, western I mean, western yeah thank you. <laughs> thank you a lot of western being played in SA so it's quite a struggle for South African artists as well you know uh, they might say there are rules but I don't I don't I wouldn't want to look at that as uh, stumbling blocks you know mm -hmm. because if the song is good if the song is good they can play it you know, so I think through collaborations, collaborating with the artists that are big in that particular country, you open, you get to open a door for you. It gains you access to, to those platforms in that particular country. We are still working on getting in, in, in some other platforms as well. It's a lot of work and patience, a lot of rejection in the process, yeah. but you just keep on keeping on until you get to a country and you realize that people have been singing your music for many years. Some people don't even know who you are, you know, and you realize that how I've been doing work and I've been not, I've, I haven't been aware that it's, 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 it's being effective there. Yeah. So just have to keep on trying. Yeah. And being prayerful as well. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we, 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 we push the prayer thing to, to be for certain, for only important matters or some, some other matters, you know, can't even something as, simple as this you know or as praying for a breakthrough internationally you know it is it's also very important be prayerful ask god to direct you to the right relationships to the right people you know people who will help propel um your vision forward um it really is important because it all it all boils down basically to relationships um you know so in it boiling down to relationships Ask God to direct you mm. to the right people um, who will help you move your ministry forward. Yeah. Because um, I promise we'll end at 9.30. It's 9.30. Can you just um, answer the rest of the questions so that we bring this meeting to a close? Which is, uh, does learning to play an instrument affect the way you sing? Uh, um, and then we answer the question of the diaspora. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, does learning to yes. play an, an instrument help you in any way in your vocal um, abilities? Yes, it does. A lot. Um, it is really, really important. Do you play um, yourself into Kozo? No, I don't. <laughs> I do not play. But I do have some um, musical knowledge. <laughs> but I do not play an instrument. And um, the thing is, I married a pro at this, so it's oh. difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to learn a, an instrument around this guy because he's an like, 
he's a pro, <laughs> you know, but I have musical knowledge. Um, I know the basics. It is really important to, to know the musical vo vocabulary in order for your vocal vocabulary <laughs> to expand. The less musical vocabulary you know, the less you can be able to do. The more music vocab you have, the more you can do and the more you can explore. So it does change. Yeah, are, you, are, you, are you, by so advising singers to, to marry instrumentalists? Yeah. <laughs> no, we end up in musical instruments. <laughs> What's the Edwin? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's for another day. So let's go to the churches in the diaspora. I mean, I mean, places uh, of worship where people uh, have to fold up and then come again and set up, and they have a challenge. Oh man! Yeah. Uh, raise out and and all that. It's really real. What do we do, or what are some of the things you suggest they should do? Uh, and then uh, she also mentioned that uh, there's a lack of instrument uh, instrumentalists mm -hmm. when they are abundance of instruments and there are no instrumentalists to what what uh, which or, or let's say as a church that is starting up which which instrument will be very crucial okay it's a keyboard the the instrument that will be crucial is a keyboard sure. uh, because it covers quite a wider range musically some of these keyboards have drums in them some of them have bass sounds so you kind of, depending on the kind of equipment multitask. that you have, you kind of multitask and you get a little bit of some kind of a band in there. Right. You know, just for starter, starters, it's very important. I think uh, it's, I would say, keyboard with drums in it because you don't have a drama yet. And then when you get a drama, then you can start thinking about synthesizers, your pianos that don't have drums, and you get a, be you get a, get a better sound, a better keyboard sound from those keyboards. And the other instrument would be a guitar. I would say key, a musical instrument that can play chords uh, would make more sense for, 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 for those kinds of churches. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't know about when you struggle to get musicians, man. I don't know. I'll just throw in there an, an issue of prayer there because <laughs> seriously, there's no place where we can, so you can go there and get a, 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 a player for you because sometimes you're not just looking for a player, you're also looking for a heart. heart yeah, man. Because sometimes you get a good player with a messed Stinking up heart, heart. and <laughs> you it's wish amazing. you can just stop this guy from playing and just clap your hands and stuff. And, you know. So that, 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 those are the dynamics of getting a, a, a player. But I would say with musical instruments, you can start with the keyboard and guitars. Okay. Uh, and, and if you are having difficulty in meeting place, uh, what are some of the innovations you can place for, for rehearsal? Oh, yes. She spoke, she spoke about rehearsals. And depending on the number of singers, I would, I would assume if it's a new church, we're not talking about a big number of singers. I think a sacrifice from one of them to rehearse in their home would really help because meeting on Sunday morning definitely is not... Is not enough, and I, I, I'm sure that the they, they experience a lot of struggles. Just pick up a day and maybe talk talk amongst yourself. You know, if you can just meet in anyone's home and just get probably that hour to prepare what you're gonna do on Sunday. Exactly. Preparation is very important. Okay, okay. Uh, the last question we got was um, stage fright. Um, how do I deal with stage fright? Um. um. Um, you're going to minister. I can expand it. You're going to minister. <laughs> yeah. you how do you? You are trembling. You oh, know, Lord. this. I mean, there is a pray, and then there is a in, and there is a post. The pray is you're already shaking. You are nervous, but you got on stage, and the song went well, so you managed to escape. Yeah. But, the, the in is maybe you didn't even foresee that there was a problem. In the course, the keyboard went off. Let's say there was, let's say something didn't go right and all you mispaged and, and, the, and this band is bad or the singers' BBs are going somewhere. You are also going somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and now you don't know what to do. You are sweating. Uh, and then the post will be, 
how do you manage a bad performance and walk around people and not feel like, oh my God, I support my whole week and I support people. My pastor is not happy with me and all that. Can you just speak to this for us? Stage fright. Yeah. The struggles. <laughs> the struggle is real. Um, and the thing is, um, being a, a, a vocalist myself, I have gone through all of that. <laughs> I have experienced all of that. Regarding stage fright, I still get it to this day. I am um, originally someone who is very, who's an introvert, um, a little bit shy around people I don't know. Um, so I'm, it, 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 the, fact, the, the fact that I get to stand in front of thousands of people is still mind boggling to me because my personality does not allow me to do that. Because I'm the type of person that when I walk into the, the room, I just want to dig a, a hole and just bury myself in it, you know. So the fact that I get to stand up in front of people, thousands of people, that on its own is just, yo, it's insane because my personality is not that. I'm the type of person who just wants to sit quietly in the corner and not speak to anyone. Not because I don't like people, <laughs> but because that's just the way I am. I, 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 I'm scared of approaching people. Okay, right. so th this is my personal testimony. Right. Um, what I have learned over the years is I have learned to use my stage fright as a means to propel me forward in my purpose. Now, how do I do that? Um, I do that by simply being honest. Um, being honest in prayer, telling the Lord that, Father, this is not me. My personality does not allow me to do this. I cannot do this on my own. Um, on my own, Ndogozo is not capable of standing in front of thousands of people. So literally, I lay down my life at your feet and I ask that you would please use me for your glory because this is not me. You chose me to do this. So me, now on my own, I cannot do it. So I really need you. So that is what I have been doing is that I take the stage fright and I turn it around and I place it in the hands of the father. And that is the best way. Because the thing is when he says in his word that we must cast all our cares upon him for he cares about us. So I cast it all upon him and then I let it go. Because it's his, I just let it go. And then I allow him to use me. That is how I have learned to take my stage fright and use it against the enemy. You know, he tried to make it, use it so that I fall and falter mm -hmm. in my purpose. But I have learned to take that mm -hmm. which the enemy thought was a weapon against me and I've turned it around, placed it in the hands of the father and he in turn has used it for his glory. Mm -hmm. um, so that is how I deal with stage fright. And one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible that helped me whenever the enemy starts whispering nonsense about my personality and you don't even, you, you're scared of people. How are you going to stand in front of thousands? This is the, my go-to scripture. It's Proverbs 28 verse 1. It says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Right. That is my scripture, that the righteous are bold as a lion. That is me. I am the righteousness of God. So I am as bold as a lion. Through Christ Jesus, I have been given all authority upon this earth. So the devil has no right to tell me that uh, it's going to go bad or um, I'm not going to do a great job. That is not my portion. I am as bold as a lion. God has given me authority to minister this particular song at this moment for his glory. So that is the pre. <laughs> the pre. And then there is the, the middle part. Yeah. The middle part is where things don't go well, <laughs> where it becomes a mess. I remember there was this one song, there was this one time many years ago, uh, before we were even married, and he wasn't even playing that day. So it was not him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that this clip. <laughs> Many years ago. And um, uh, so there we were, we were singing the song, and the song had modulations in it. 
So there were modulations, man. And I, I, I don't even know if I wasn't, I was wearing my glasses or if I wasn't. But anyway, the song has modulations. I look at the keyboard player at the time and to signal to him that we're going to the next key as we had rehearsed. You know, just a gentle reminder. Ah, Pastor Edwin, the keyboard player was here. <laughs> keyboard player was not looking at me. <laughs> so it literally, and so, and so now I'm starting to panic because, okay, he didn't see me and now here's this part now. And should then, I should I go? Should I not go? Should I stay? Should I go? <laughs> what, what, what do I do? And then suddenly, before I even knew it, the BVs went. <laughs> the BVs went there. And the keyboard player is still down there. The keyboard player is still <laughs> over there. BVs went to the next key. The bass player decided to join the BVs, <laughs> but the keyboard guy is still there. He's, oh, not, he's not getting it. Mm. I, at that moment, I just lifted up my hands and just started breathing. <laughs> 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 It was beyond me. It truly was beyond me. I had no idea how to recover from that. And I just prayed and I prayed until the keyboard player finally realized what was going on. And then he joined the rest of the crew. And then when he joined, then I joined. So I, I just decided to just keep quiet and just lift up my hands. <laughs> And just be in worship and say, hallowed be thy name, Lord. Could you please send a message to the keyboard player, God? <laughs> but it was a disaster. I was, I was so embarrassed. I was really, really embarrassed. I, after that song, um, we, there was, there was still, we were still supposed to sing another song before I sat down. I sang the second song. But still, my heart was broken. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> how could they do this to me? But we practiced. We knew how many times we're supposed to um, linger in that key before yeah. we move on to. Oh, why didn't he? Why didn't he remember? So there, I was heartbroken, mm -hmm. distraught, <laughs> and and feeling like a serious failure. And more especially because I'm someone. Who, who is a perfectionist. I believe in, in offering a, a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. And then suddenly the sacrifice has been broken into pieces and it's literally just trying to recover the pieces that I could, you know, it was crazy. But how, how I saw it at the, end of the, at, at the end of it all, these are moments that, that keep us humble. Those are moments that remind us that it is always about God at the end of the day. Because weirdly enough, after the service, the number of saints that came to me and told me that they were blessed <laughs> by the administration <laughs> is insane. It was insane. I was like, are these people deaf? Didn't they hear that we made a bad move over there and it was a mess and so forth? But the thing is, God can use anything, you know, even at our worst, God still works. Yeah. You know, sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves at, um, you know, wanting perfection that we, we, we forget that we are just humans, you know, and sometimes you, we're going to make mistakes, you know, every now and then you're going to forget um, the key change that you shouldn't forgets the key change that you've been doing <laughs> for 10 times you know you know there will be those moments and those moments i believe are to remind you that you know it's all about god at the end yeah. of the day yeah you know i need to relax you yeah. know and i need to allow god to be god you know i cannot take part in his glory the glory is his and his alone because sometimes when you know that you know people are always commenting you complimenting you and saying, ha-ha, you're doing such a great job, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it kind of <clears throat> boosts your ego in such a way. And every now and then, God has to remind us that at the end of the day, the glory should always go back to him. You know, all the, all the thank yous and the God bless yous that we receive after ministration, we should always go back home and give it back 
to the owner of it all. And that is God himself. We should always give the glory back to God. And every now and then these moments where we have felt inadequate and where we felt like failures, those are just gentle reminders for us that we are just human. And at the end of the day, God gets the glory. Amen. 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 When we are at our worst, God works. He still yes, sir. That's that's something we can take home. Thank you so Amen. much. We can't we can't take enough uh, uh, of your time. Um, we we've really exhausted you guys. I know it's late. It's almost twelve. <laughs> Joe Beg. Uh, yeah, it's almost midnight. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And I just want our audience participant to know that it's a sacrifice from our brother and our sister. And uh, may God bless you. We we really love you from Ghana. You already know. You already know we love you. We love you. We love you. We love what you do for the kingdom of God. And for the rest of the brothers, uh, we hope to hook up with them on the Zoom so there will be a blessing. But um, before we go, I see on the page everybody everybody wants to go and sleep with a sound. <laughs> the lockdown, I promise you. <laughs> so, humbly, is, is there any song you want to just bless our heart with a worship, whatever, I mean, just so that we can, we can just receive from your... Your, 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 yourself and your husband, uh, your ministry. Before we, we leave, before we leave, just um, if you could bless us with the worship. Oh, One second. No second. problem. So all of you on the platform, thank you so much. We'll be wrapping up very soon um, and we'll be telling you what's coming up next week. Next week, God willing, um, we're trying to still arrange for Wednesdays. Most likely, we'll, we'll have a meeting on Zoom on Wednesday. But on Thursday, I'm sure we'll be having um, Dr. William Oscar. Dr. William Oscar is the, is the music director for TG Jakes currently. Uh, and uh, he, he's a superb guy. And he would also be bringing us some lessons and teachings next week, Thursday. But Wednesday is very likely we will have a meeting. I'm still working on it. I don't want to speak. So you get to know what we are going to um, discuss on, on Wednesday. I will confirm it. We, we are very likely to have Pastor Zaya Nela and somebody else on Wednesday. On Wednesday to speak to some other very critical part of what we do as as ministers so um <clears throat> intercoso and Mobego are ready to to bless us let's just open up our hearts and receive ministry from them thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus are we unmuted? Can you hear us? Okay, we can hear you.
Oh, 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 Jesus. Father, we bless you. We, we surrender everything. We surrender our minds. We surrender our dreams. We surrender our hopes. We surrender our broken vessels. We surrender our disappointment. We surrender our families and our children. We surrender our work, our job. Those of us who have lost our job, those of us who have lost relatives and friends, we surrender our hearts, our minds, our emotions. Jesus, only you can heal us. We receive your word through this ministration. Heal our hearts in the name of Jesus. And Father, we know that when we surrender and we give you everything, oh God, Lord, you, you will take it and turn it and release it back to us. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. And so bring us into the place of overflow. Everyone hearing us, increase us on every side. Let these words that we have heard in this workshop be translated into monuments, into, into practical ways, oh God, that we can, we can exalt Jesus in our ministry and with our gift. Lord, tonight we have learned that in the worst of our situation, you still works. Oh, Reba Kosha, Vedi Sabaronde, Ri Itaya, Ivaru Shabaya, Lakata, Livaga, Marodesh, Kibanda. In every worst situation, in our brokenness, in our lostness, in our littleness, oh Jesus, let God begin to work. Jesus begin to do something new. May, may we begin to trust you more and more and our eyes be open to see what you are doing in our life. We don't see it, but you are still working. We thank you that you turn our worst to our best. Oh God, we give you the glory. I thank you that you are touching lives on this platform i thank you you are healing ministers on this platform and we celebrate you for the gift and the anointing in the vessels of mr and mrs Mbata. we thank you for their family we thank you for the obedience we thank you jesus for such a time like this and bringing them into our generation and for the message that they stand for. And Father, we pray that they would go beyond their horizon. Lord, you will lift them up. You make them a voice. You amplify their voice. You echo their voices. Oh God, wherever they stand to play and to sing, and kingdoms will be torn down and the righteousness of God will be exalted everywhere. We thank you for their lives. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, we want to say a big thank you and on behalf of all the Ghanaians, uh, because I'm the host. We want to say medase yadamwase pap 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 which means that we say thank you and God richly bless you. Siabonga, 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 Thank you. We 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 know you are tired, but I mean our pages are full. Uh, and we are going to type all that we, we have written and just shared on Facebook. We have this recording. For those of you listening, we have this recording. We would compress it because we are doing the same for Pastor Steve. We'll compress it and share it on um, YouTube um, and other social media platforms. So get set. Um, this is for all of us. Uh, and whatever you've learned, go and share it. Get ready when the lockdown is the ban on public gathering is lifted, much will be expected of you. Much will be expected of you. Much will be expected to say. So, and um, just to encourage you, when you get on this platform, don't get tired, you know, because this is like a three-hour rehearsal, I mean, for us and a workshop. And so gather the courage, gather the tenacity, the capacity, and and learn. It will be a blessing to all of you. So um, next week, God willing, like I said, it's, we're going to have Pastor Isaiah, Nela, and somebody else from another country to be a blessing in a discussion. We're going to be talking about some deep stuff with our voices and with our ministry. Uh, and then on the Thursday, we would have all the way from United States, um, Dallas, we'll have uh, the music director, 
of uh, TDJ, Dr. Oscar, you can start looking out for him. Great stuff. And that would really benefit the instrumentalist. We are once again very sorry that uh, we had some glitches and some 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 difficulties with the internet at the beginning. Uh, at the point I had to be out of the meeting and we had to re-log again, uh, logging into the meeting. And thanks for your patience. For those of you who were removed, thank for your sacrifice. Um, you hear this when you later listen, but we thank you. We really appreciate you uh, for, for doing this for us. Uh, uh, for those of you from the diaspora, US, China, Ukraine, SA, Nigeria, Togo, Ivory Coast, um, Iceland, um, and then London, we want to say a big, big, big thank you. Thank you for what you are doing for Christ, for his kingdom, and for humanity. Your reward will, will never, your, your labor will never be forgotten. God will bless you for being a channel. Russia and all those guys, thank you so thank much. You. If, if, if you've, wherever you've listened to in Germany, I see Germany. So next week, we have a date again. Uh, and I want to apologize for those in the waiting room. We had over, how many people in the waiting room? Over 60 or, yeah. It's because the capacity for the Zoom is 500. Uh, we upgraded it 500. You know, it's it just cost anyway, but we are just doing this for free. We are not charging. Uh, but if God bless us, we would try and increase it beyond that. Um, we will look out for that. Um, if God touches your heart in the lockdown, your money is not locked down, but you want to support this one, that would be worth it. Um, God has, has raised some of us up to be, to be a blessing through these means. And uh, I don't take it for granted that we could have over two over almost three hours with uh into Kozo and and they they are so i mean she was not well for your information but she had to make this sacrifice so so we 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 thank god for that and we will do our best to bring this ministry to all of you who hook up with us god bless you and when we go on social media please share uh and keep sharing this information don't keep it to yourself um Thank you once again uh, on behalf of myself and the crew, Spawn, uh, my technical director, uh, and, and the sister Joan, and Pastor Kelvin here, all the way from Rev Session Studios, and myself, <laughs> Pastor Edwin. We want to say a big, 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 big thank you. Uh, I want to also thank Pastor Jonas. Uh, he's my diaspora connector. Uh, he's my, my my boss and Sly and uh, all the wonderful people on this platform. Uh, I wouldn't try and mention names uh, so I don't have offend anybody. But I think we will just um, close and, and have some ministry video from Intokozo whilst we, we wrap up uh, on this. Um, I'm, I'm sure myself I'll make some time to also do some presentations uh, and uh, we're going to we're going to try as we can to get our Ghanaian counterparts to also be a blessing to us so we, 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 we know we have great vessels here and we will call on them to be a blessing when the time is due thank you for your obedience thank you for adhering to all the instructions and may God continue to increase you we love you and bye so enjoy the video uh, now go back And I see how far God's brought me, so I'll never go back. Anymore. What you need, so let me just say this, that you can go on my page on Instagram or, or, or Facebook.
In uncertain times like today, Father, we bless you. There's none like you and there's none that we can compare to you. Abba Father, you are a great king. You are mighty God. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Yahweh, the I am that I am. This evening we're here just to say, blessed be your holy name, because without you there is none that we...
blood of Jesus has given us victory. Amen.